The one thing I want to speak about today is, and before we get to the questions, is the idea of energy versus anti-energy. And there, so there's certain things that actually are energy generators, they give us energy, and then there are things that are energy stealers. They basically rob us, rob us of energy. And this is why we have to totally uh, uh, renew our perspective, refresh our perspective, change our perspective on this idea of the almighty calorie. So calories will tell us how much energy may be in something, but it doesn't tell us whether that energy is going to contribute to us or if it's going to leak our energy and leach our energy and siphon off our energy. So just because something is high in calories doesn't mean it's going to leak your energy. And just because something is low in calories doesn't mean it's going to prevent you from putting waste and, and weight on the body. Um, in fact, you know, if, if, you, if you think about the reasons that people put on the weight they do, it's because that which they're putting in is actually causing their body to waste so much of its own energy. So from now on, think about what you consume in terms of, is it an energy donor or is it an energy stealer? And the way to know this is energy donors are, have tons of extra electrons. This is what makes them an energy donor. So everything that is high alkaline is negatively ionically charged, which means it has lots of extra electrons. So the electrons are what we're looking for. Electrons are never going to, and you know, obviously if we overeat on anything, it's gonna clog our body and it's gonna slow everything down. So over, overeating slows everything down, which means that we have impaction at the end of the day. We have stuff residing in our system that is preventing flow. But substances that are, have tons of extra electrons are your energy donors and they are not going to make you old and sick and heavy. Those things which are energy stealers, electron stealers, they actually go in and they have to, they, because they have so few electrons or they have more electrons, they have more protons in their nucleus and they have electrons on their outer belt, they're going to go and they're going to suffocate all of your healthy atoms, which have all these light generating electrons. So they're going to, they're just basically, if you think about it, you have a candle and you've got those, uh, what are those things called you put the candles out with? Not as... A snuffer, yeah? Okay. They're like snuffers. They basically, you know, going in, they're putting it, um, the, they're put, taking your, putting your candle out. So this is the, the way you want to look at food. It's, it's the simplest, easiest, just the most direct way to look at it and say, okay, is this, is this actually going to donate electrons to my electron bank or is it going to steal them? And in so doing, wind up as it sits there in my body doing that, robbing me of more and more and more energy. It's, it's like you, you take out, it, it, you pay for the substance when you take it in, if it's an electron stealer, if it's, a, um, if it's, an, if it's anti-energetic, and then you keep on paying for it endlessly, like, like your debt accumulates with it. And um, it, was just, it was a silly thought, um, again, it may or may not um, come across well, but um, I was thinking about, you know, people talk about narcissism so much these days, and it's, it's such a, a, a hot topic word, gets terribly overused in my opinion, but, um, but nevertheless, it is something that's um, certainly proliferating in um, personalities today because um, it, actually, it actually makes sense because of the way, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. It's, it's, kind of, it's the parasitic way that um, well, people are looking for attention, but it's the same way that I want to uh, connect it with food. Um, you've heard probably of narcissistic supply. And I want to add a word in between and call it narcissistic food supply. So what is narcissistic food? <laughs> narcissistic food is food that has to get attention, that has to be advertised, that has to be put in boxes and made to look good. It needs lots and lots of attention. It doesn't even get enough attention when it's sitting in the box looking pretty or in, a, in the advertisement or in the commercial it then needs to rob all of your energy and take all of your attention when it's in your body. So this is, this is narcissistic food. And, um, you know, if, and that's a good way of knowing what you don't want in your, um, in your body. You don't want narcissists in your life. Well, you don't want narcissistic food in your life either. So it's food that takes all the energy, takes all the attention, takes all the oxygen, literally the oxygen out of the room and puts everything on it. And then 
not only does it do those things and um, and make you pay the price for it, but it makes you keep on wanting it. It has a way of, of continuing to get your attention. It won't let you go, and yet it punishes you. So if you think about all of these substances that we shouldn't be eating, they are in fact, um, if you want to look at it that way, um, narcissistic foods. And so if, if foods are being advertised, if they have to be put in boxes and bags and made to look pretty and all this stuff, um, made to look appealing and, they, and, and they, they're addictive like that, you can think of them in that way. Um, and you will never find anything in nature that does that. So the beautiful leaves, the grasses that we talked about in the audio the other day, um, they, they don't ask for any attention. They just give. They just, they're just these, these beautiful um, expressions of life that are there to generate, to offer themselves, to be of benefit. They don't need to, they don't take anything from you when you've taken them in. They don't make you addicted. Do you see the difference? It's really, and so in there and you have the energetic force versus the anti-energetic force. So these things play out in every way as above, so below, of course, and in, in our energy, in our, in our food, in matter and in non-material things. So yeah, nowhere, nowhere in nature um, do we, we see this sort of narcissistic food only in the artificial realm, only in the, um, in the, in the manufactured um, world, you know, the way, the way our, our culture directs us. And so, and the question again becomes why? Why is, why is that being presented to us? Because nowhere do we actually see in nature any living thing thrive from taking in those substances, the very same substances that we're told that we should be consuming. Where, where do we see anything in nature thrive consuming that? Even, you know, however, you know, you, in looking in nature, yes, you, you see animals that are carnivorous consuming other animals, but they're not cooked and they're not battered and fried and served up with, you know, a, a side of mashed potatoes. Everything is in its, its raw form. Obviously there's some things that are still, you know, hard to watch like that, but nevertheless, they're not, um, they're, they're not presented the way we're told we should be consuming food. So it's really, really important to acknowledge that whenever you feel pressure from society or from friends or family, coworkers, anyone around you that makes you feel like what you're doing is wrong. Show me one place in nature where that which we're told in society to do actually causes nature to thrive. It doesn't anywhere. And we have inverse evidence to prove th the same thing, which is you, you take non-humans, take animals, take domesticated pets, and the only other beings not, uh, you know, sentient beings that suffer the way humans do are domesticated animals. So, and why is that? Because they're treated like humans. They're getting vaccinations, they're given dry food, they're given processed food in boxes, narcissistic food supply. <laughs> they're, given, they're given food that, that needs commercials and, um, and marketing and all of this stuff. So, these, so the pets are suffering from depression, from... Um, 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 sorry, um, intestinal diseases and um, cancer, all the same things that humans are suffering from and only because they're consuming similarly. So um, on that very happy note, <laughs> I just wanted to really make sure we address it. We have, we have to understand that in order to keep going further and, and stand up for what we know to be true and make sense of it all. Um, because at the end of the day, what the anti-energetic substances do is they cause us to literally rot inside. They, they're drawing us out, they're developing colonies, they have to, you know, they're, 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 they're creating, you know, this, this hierarchy of need, which starts in the palate, the hierarchy of desire. When, it's, when it starts in the palate, you have problems. When it starts in the loins, you have problems. When it's, when it's orifices looking for something that they have to consume, you know that that's parasitic, that that's, um, and, and that, again, it can be, um, literal material parasites. It can also be energetic parasites, like the ones that would be operating, you know, in some of those orifices that we won't go into all that right now. But, um, but the, the sexual conversation is a really big one and we have to have it at some point, whether or not we have it in, the, in this um, greatest cleanse or not, um, it, it needs to be discussed because it's, um, it's, 
it's as big of a problem in terms of anti-energy and causing us to fail to reach our greatest potential. And by the same token, if we can understand that when we take food in by mouth or anything in by mouth, it's an extremely intimate exchange. It's no different. It's you're taking it into your, it's crossing your boundaries. It's crossing your border. It's moving into your internal territory. That's intimate space. So, you know, you, can, you want to really think about what you're getting intimate with on your plate, on your fork, in your glass, on your straw. All right. So, yeah, that's that's the that's the hard stuff that I wanted to open with, just to really, really make sure that as much as we're going to have a lot of fun uh, for the rest of our time together, we got to have the, the sober truths that will, you know, really hopefully motivate you to um, to stay close to these life generating substances and overcome those that are not so that you don't have that leaching and leaking and siphoning of your true innate power what's left of it and what's left of it is what's going to regenerate a big comeback so even if a lot of your power and you might be listening to this thinking gosh well i've spent most of my life consuming anti-energetic substances engaging in anti-energetic behaviors and you know and my energy is pretty low well you're here your energy is good enough to have gotten you here and as soon as you turn that cycle the right way it starts to catch energy it starts to build momentum builds and you will exceed any amount of energy that your your best energy you ever had you'll far exceed that in no time and it will just keep on growing and building and building as long as you get it going in the right direction which of course is what we're doing